Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. It's good to be with you. Hey, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, sign up. It's at drlorev.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. I, I just sold out my class again. And you know who knew first? The people who signed up for the newsletter. So get on it so you get all the information that you want from us right away. Uh, my guests are here from all over. Everything's unscripted. I'm going to look at their objects and see what they've got. I think you have them. So it looks like we've got some Roseville. It looks like they've got a silver uh, plated piece that's for water service. It looks like we've got a pre-Columbian style pot. We've got some other pieces too. Let's go with the Roseville piece right out of the chute. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm John from Pittsburgh. Hi, John. How are you? So you've got a Roseville sign there. Is that yeah, what that, Mark says on the bottom? Yes, exactly. So, I didn't know. You go ahead, honey. No, I didn't know whether you'd be able to see it if I turned it over. So that's what it says. Okay. So it says Roseville, USA, and then it says four, five, eight, and then it says 10 inches. So that gives you, of course, how big it is. And the, to decipher the mark is kind of important. Can you show us the mark? So I can just decipher it for everybody. Now, whether you can see it or not, he gave you a good, there's a good shot. There you go. So it's Roseville, USA, made in Sainsville, Ohio. The mod model number is that, what, 458 number. And then you've got 10 with the, with the um, two elements that indicate those two little marks that indicate the inches signs. Um, this is a nice piece. Typically, these pieces are, of course, they have some kind of decoration, a flower, rose, that kind of thing. So how did you acquire it? Um, I actually was at Goodwill the other day and they had it for $5.99. Excellent. It came with two candlesticks that look identical, but I'm not sure if it's a set or not. Typically they are a set, yes. So you'll have a bowl and then you'll have two candlesticks. Uh, then some of those sets, not for Roseville, will be like a clock and then two candlesticks. It's very typical to have one of those sets that would sit on an entryway table or maybe a dining table. Yeah. So is the is the flower the same and is there a mark on the bottom that's the same yes. number? No, the, the number on the bottom of this it's one different. is different. But Why it, is it different? Because of a mold number, right? So this is what yeah. you look for. So the two candlesticks should have the same mold number, that three digit. Okay, that three-digit number. Yes. And then, of course, the Roseville USA is their typical identifier mark. I would say for the three pieces, which are a set, and if you can, I would sell them as a set. Uh, okay. The three pieces, $185 for three pieces as the set. So that's really nice. Wow, thank you so much. You're very welcome. It's a nice set. There are no chips, no cracks. It's, of course, yeah. um, the hand-painted ceramic uh, Roseville, and even the interior looks like it's in good shape. I don't think anybody put a plant in it. <laughs> oh, is, is it a planter? Usually you can put sort of a, either a planter or you can just use it as a centerpiece bowl. But the idea is you walk into a home and there's the two candlesticks on either side. And then that's either the catch-all bowl or the planter bowl. It's more for decoration than anything else. Okay. It dates to about the 1940s, 1950s. Very good for $5.99 in Pittsburgh. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Nice to see you. Oh gosh, that was a nice, a nice Goodwill find. And there's so many thrift store finds. And I'm sure that you've seen um, so many of my videos where I give you tips about how to find them. And of course, there's also tips about how to sell the stuff that you find uh, through my newsletter. And of course, at drlorib.com. My guests are here. It's always good to see all of you. Let's see those smiles. Let's see those objects. So there's some nice smiles. Look at those smiles. <laughs> there's some nice smiles. Then we've got a piece that kind of looks like a choker. I don't know. If we got the front or the back of that piece of jewelry. I can't really tell. There's a lot of backlight there. It's hard for me to see. I'm getting a lot of glare off the backlight. And then I've got a piece in relief as well. Um, let's take a look. So that piece looks like it could be a hand mirror in relief. This is a hard one. Hard to choose from these. Uh, let's take the piece of jewelry. Looks like some nice rhinestones with, of course, some green faceted stones with it. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? Hello, I'm good. Good to see you. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm Deanna from Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Deanna. So now tell me, 
I think I look. I think I ran out of gas in Springfield, Missouri once. <laughs> kind of think that I'm, I'm having a feeling about Springfield anyway so tell me about this how did you acquire this uh it was my grandmother's oh that's nice so does it have a hook clasp on the other side yes a little brass it? hook little brass hook on the back right yes and you got all these rhinestones right yes there you go okay can you hook it again so we can see the piece because now I'm looking at like nothing I'm just looking at the black kind of holder thing yeah let me there we the go. Thing. Thank you, Vienna. I appreciate if it. If I can get it to stay on there. Oh, sure, of course. That was my fault. I shouldn't have asked you about the hook. Why did I ask about the hook? Because I want you to know what to look for. And the hook is indicative usually of the early years of the 20th century. It's an inexpensive way for, of course, the costume jewelry design firm to get you a nice strong hook, a nice strong clasp without actually paying for a clasp. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things that you see. Um, and the class that basically goes inverted into another piece. So you've got rhinestones. It looks like it's actually like a collar, right? Like almost like a yes. collar and a tie. And it can actually go on the top of a scoop neck. Like I usually wear a scoop neck. So it can uh -huh. go on the top of a scoop neck and it can be a faux collar as well as a piece of jewelry. Um, okay. Value, time period for it, early 20th century. So the 1930s, 40s, into the 50s. I would say between late 30s into the early 50s. And value on that piece, just about $85. That's a nice piece as nice. well. Based on actual sales records always, which is where something, simil something similar has sold. So it's not a list. That's just something sitting there, not selling. It's, of course, where something sold. That's a nice piece. I like it. So do you wear it? Do you like it? Do you just hold it in your jewelry box because, you know, it was grandma's? I just hold it because it was grandma's. A lot of people do that. I mean, I do that too. Everybody's, we're a lot of us are responsible. We're just, oh, we just, it's grandma's. We just always keep it there. You know, put it on with something green the next time you wear something green. You know, I've let's... never been really sure how it was supposed to go because of this piece. No, that's they how it goes. Over. You, you, have it right. you have it right. It's a nice piece. It's a nice piece. I like it a lot. Hey, nice to see you, Vienna. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah, I think it's a very nice piece. And again, you know, Take out some of that jewelry that's been sitting in the jewelry boxes and take it out for a ride, you know, a spin. <laughs> you know, what? wear some of those pieces. Don't be afraid. A lot of you always say, oh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, Dr. Lori, I'm going to lose it, you know. Um, make sure that those clasps are nice and strong. Could security chains are, are also something that you might want to think about for those heirloom pieces of jewelry. So nice. That was a nice piece. My guests are here from all over, from near and far. And we're going to look at their objects and tell them what to look for and what it's worth. So let's see what they've got. Better shot. Let's see what they've got. Well, I have to say that I do like the pre-Columbian style piece. I might come back to that. I like blue. I always like blue. We know that. And the kitty cats are pretty, too. We like those, too. Let's take a look at this piece that is, um, it looks like it's silver plated. And it looks like it is actually a... Um, a water pitcher that would actually be uh oh well wait a minute now we're showing a sterno can so it's going to heat something up okay hi i'm dr Lori. how hi. are you hi fine gail you and tom from? i'm sorry tom and gail from hi, houston gail. Hi. can you guys back up a little because you're right on top yeah i know i can't I, see the, the camera. whole piece actually i want to do the camera I get it. I got let it. tom do that uh oh tom's gonna do it tom's I gonna move it. it there it is thank you tom yeah. Sure. Right on the side of a, of a nice uh, Japanese woodblock print book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Um, so this particular piece, how'd you acquire it, folks? At an estate sale today, it's uh, marked 800 silver on the bottom, and it's from uh, oh, AAF Cleave. Oh, that's wonderful. So it's marked 800 silver, so it's a lot better than we would have thought. Okay, yeah, we... so go ahead. Thank goodness for our Dr. Lori loop, you know. I, mean, I know. The loop is excellent, right? We actually got two other pieces with it. Yeah, it's a three-piece set. Three we got a creamer set. And then, the, like you said, the water, hot water thing. We got that, too. But Yeah, so but, this is the hot water pitcher, and it says 800 on it, and it's also marked with the maker, right? Right. Yes. Okay. It also is on a stand, so basically you don't have to actually lift the whole thing up. You can just tilt it and pour it into your teacup. Oh, yeah. Oh, ah, okay. okay. And that's the idea, so you can just that's tilt good. it. And then what you have there is that's a chocolate pot and that helps to date uh, the pieces. So when you're looking uh, at those okay. pieces, you're looking at, of course, 
pots that relate to the latter part of the 19th century. So they're going to date between 18675 and about 1900. That piece oh. that we're looking at, the first piece is the piece that I'll appraise. And it is for hot water. So you can see that the can there, and you could hold the top and then you could tilt. You could actually tilt it from the top so you don't have to put your hand on the metal, which will be hot, right? right. And then you could just tilt and leave it right there. Very, very typical. Think of the buffet line, how much easier that would be that when you want to yeah. get your tea. And as you know, you know, in many, uh, in many um, particular parts of the world, that idea of tea being always on the ready is very, very typical and important. You got to have some hot water around. So for 800 parts per thousand, which of course is not quite the sterling standard, but it is pretty high quality for silver, value on your piece about $300 for that one piece. Nice. So very nice job. Neri, what'd you pay at the estate sale? We paid uh, one, 100 for the three pieces. Oh, you did great. 100 for three pieces, great. So now when you saw it at the estate sale, why did you pick it up? Did you say, oh, I know that at least it's silver or, you know, it's silver and I can melt it down or I know that it's a good deal in it being three pieces for $100. I, I like the construction the and design. The, the design yeah. and the details. There's a and lot of detail. The quality and, of the construction. And, and the, the design is beautiful, I have to say. And I like, of course, the handle very much. I like the contrast that is continued with the silver and the black throughout the whole piece. Um, Design value, a lot of you will say, oh, I could just melt that down. Remember, when you melt something down, when you melt down a metal like that, you lose design value and you lose the antique value or the age value too. So be careful before you just say, oh, I'm going to melt it down. So no, we wouldn't well, do that. The quality of the construction is amazing. You know. Beautiful. Hey, good eye, good eye. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Take care. Yeah, that was very good. And for three pieces, I only saw one of the three pieces they got. But for three pieces, if you have an opportunity to get a set and buy a set, that's always a good idea. That particular piece was marked. In fact, that particular piece was marked with an English hallmark. And um, it also said 800 parts per thousand of pure silver. So it wasn't the sterling standard like you typically see, 925 parts per thousand pure silver. But it still was a very nice set, very nice set. So, yeah, that was great. My guests are here from all over. Thank you for being with me. I appreciate it. I know a lot of you are sharing. I hope you're sharing the channel with others. And I hope that you, of course, are letting others know about Ask Dr. Lori Live, too. All right. We've got that pan, that particular bowl. And we also have a... Oh, look, there I am. It's there. All right. <laughs> let's take a look at this weather vane. How about a weather vane? A lot of you asked me about weather vanes or wind vanes. Um, let's take a look at that one. Hi, sir. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. It's a pleasure. I'm excited. It's my pleasure. What's your name? Bob. Bob, it's nice to see you. I got to ask you the question now. Bob, I want to know how long did it take to grow the beard? Um, well, I've had the beard since I was 15. I'm wow. 62. Oh, my gosh, Bob. Well, I, did, I did just trim it for this show. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It's looking good, Bob. I like Thank it. Thank you. You Thank and you. David Letterman with the beards. <laughs> I like it. So well, we have looking. Oh, well, Bob, you know, I can't speak to that. You're both good looking. All right. <laughs> tell me, tell me about this piece. How did you acquire that very traditional running horse weather vane with, of course, the directional letters, north, south, east, west? And actually the original mounting brackets as well. Oh, you've got the mounting bracket too. So it went on the top of a cupola. Was it from uh, parts of New York or New England? Yes, it was actually off our family farm in Argyle, New York, up in the Adirondack Mountains. There you go. There you in go. In I'm sorry. You go ahead. You go ahead. In 1979, when I graduated high school, my my uncle, uh, I was living with my uncle and aunt, uh, allowed me to take it down off the barn and take it with me uh, as, I guess, a graduation gift or a going away gift. I always loved it. It's and, beautiful. Uh, so I, I've, I've carried it with me everywhere I've gone since then. And I really don't know much about it. Okay. Um, but uh, I well, just we know a lot it. about it. It's a very typical American style, um, ninth, late 19th century weather, uh, weather vane, right? Um, now, again, a couple of things about it. First of all, there are different ones. They're constructed metal, right? So they're copper. And then they have 
again, the mounting, you have the mounting piece. It doesn't have, it has an orb too. And then, it, yes, I see, I see, thank you. And then we also have, of course, the directionals. So the directional letters are oftentimes very um, popular and important. Now, in terms of someone, JMB says it's spectacular. In terms of quality, it's above average, okay? So it's kind of like you and me. We're above average, you know, Bob? <laughs> so I like it very much. It's in good condition for its age. That's true. It's in good condition. Now, there's always going to be some of that oxidation that you're going to see, of course. That's very typical of these pieces. They've been out in the weather, and that's fine. I'm very happy you didn't clean it up and you didn't polish it up. It looks great the way it is. Now, in terms of value, there was a time, I can tell you, that I appraised many, many of these between 10 and 15 years ago when they would be 10,000, 15,000, you know, big, big numbers. Today, that is not the market for these weather vanes. American weather vanes of the late 19th century value on yours, just about $1,500 for yours in that condition. Now, and because of the origin, you notice how I said, is it from New, New York? Is it from New England? I knew exactly where it was from yeah. because the style is important. The way in which the horse has the tail as if it's running, running, right? The way in which you have, you know, where the legs are positioned, the way the face is, how the mane is done. All of this is, is indicative of particular makers, right, of these particular weather veins or wind veins. And the idea is that it actually will spin and tell you the direction, of course, the wind is blowing, which is going to be important for, of course, agricultural places. Um, well, it's going to be important for everybody, but it's going to be important specifically for folks that are working in the agricultural sector. So yeah, it seems like a great gift for graduation, right? And I think more people should be handing down art antiques and collectibles for graduation and holiday gifts. It's a great idea to have a family heirloom handed down. So you enjoy it, and Thank it's you. nice to meet you. It was a pleasure to meet you. I, 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 I'm, I was very excited. Thank you very much. It's really my pleasure. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned in. I will, and I'll tell everybody. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> So that's a nice piece. It's a nice piece for a lot of reasons. Most people go, oh, oh, the condition, the condition. Hey, you know, when something's outside like that, it's very typical to have that condition. Now, in terms of spectacular, some of them that are very, very rare are very interesting forms. Uh, you might have, of course, coachmen with horses. Um, I've seen, of course, many, many roosters that most of you have probably seen. And, of course, horses just like that. But that was a nice above average style American late 19th century weather vane. And he was pretty spectacular in his own right. <laughs> I'm Dr. Lori. It's good to be with you. I'm the PhD Antiques Appraiser. I'm happy to share my expertise and tell you what to look for when you're looking for art antiques and collectibles at that thrift store or yard sale, or maybe you're in grandma's attic uh, looking for stuff. So we've got what, what looks to be a sculpture figural of a animal, lamb, uh, I'm sorry, ram, stag, such. And then I have what looks to be a um, spiral. It might be a candlestick. I'm not getting a very good look and whether, oh, it's a pillar candlestick piece. And then we've got a bowl as well. Let's take a look at this pillar candlestick because a lot of you collect candlesticks. In fact, hi, I'm Dr. Lori. Oh. What's your name? Hi, Sue. I'm from Boston. Hi, Sue. It's nice to see you. So you had appraised an item before that had metal integrated with glass, but I think it was a vase or a glass or something. Or so someone I was on the about, show? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I'm curious about this one. Okay. So how, is it marked at all? <laughs> it is not. Okay. It's no, there's no marking on the bottom. Can I see the underside? All right. Okay. A couple, a couple, how did you acquire it? It was at a thrift shop. I think it was three dollars. Closer to the camera. Three dollars is good for anything. You're not there's your camera. There you go. All right. So you have a silver toned metal against this blue cobalt glass. A couple of different things with respect to the blown glass and of course the silver, the toned metal. Uh, you have an, em an embossed cast element. So all of that is a cast metal, which has been decorated all the way through. Time period for it, early years of the 20th century to the mid 20th century. I think it's American and value on it in today's market, about $85. We've had that number a lot tonight, but the reason why I think it's that, is it 15 inches tall or is it shorter? 
No, it's shorter. It's about um, 10 and 8 inches. Oh, it's 8 inches? Then you're in that $65 range. Very That's good. Thank you so much. I was curious. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice piece. For 3 bucks. it's nice. It probably did not have a mate like most candlesticks. Okay. Okay. Nice to see you. Thanks for calling in from Boston. Yeah, so when you're looking at pieces that are cast like that, realize that when they're casting, of course, the metal, they're thinking about how the glass is going to go in. Did you notice it didn't have a base and it didn't have a bottom? The glass was the bottom. And that's one of the things that you typically look for as well. Of course, uh, diameter measurement there, or circumference me measurement there. So it's a nice piece, nice piece. Um, candlesticks, very popular and always easy to resell when people are trying to resell pieces. People like candlesticks. I don't have a lot of candlesticks in my house, but you know, people like candlesticks. My guests are here from here and there and everywhere. We saw a lot of nice metals already. It might be the night for metals tonight. Weather vane. <laughs> She's a I, lot prettier than this girl. <laughs> <laughs> I just really liked it and I really have no idea how old it might be and I would love some information. So Okay, so get it right up to the camera and let's, let's break this down. First of all, her face is very typical of, of figures that are trying to look like the Renaissance revival, okay? Now, why is that? We know that she's not from the 1400s or the early 1500s. A square collar, that's oftentimes very Renaissance. And when I, what I mean by that is not the Italian Renaissance, but Germanic, the German Renaissance. Mm. So I want to get you to Northern Europe, and now I want you to see these square collars, usually a choker on the necklace, long earrings, and then the actual um, plucking out of the hairline, and then that leaves a space for this headpiece. So the form is trying to look back at the Renaissance era, and then you have these nice little three-leaf clover pattern in the back. Can I see the front? Because the front is gonna tell me how 20th century it is. The front of it, which of course is, your, is the mirror itself, is obviously from the 20th century, probably sometime between 1920 and 1940. Okay. So now, where did you get it? Goodwill for $2.99. Okay, can I see the, the handle portion now that we see the girl? Okay, and then can I see the side? So can you show it to me? Th th stop right there and up a little bit. So it's, it's wood and then it's painted over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pre-World War II. It's probably 1940s to 1945. It's looking nice. back at the Renaissance in terms of her style, her little flippy hair, right? <laughs> That's also something that we'd see in the German Renaissance in terms of style. Uh, the artist, now again, I, I don't criticize artists only because, I criticize <laughs> art, I don't criticize artists because I can't paint you a stick figure. But I have to say, she doesn't do the very good profile, very, or he or she doesn't do the very good profile very well because you can actually see it's almost Picasso-esque where you can see one eye and see another eye kind of on top of it. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, there's a little cubism happening. I would say value on it, just about $35. What did you pay? $2.99. Okay, that's good. $2.99 to make $35. It does have some condition issues, which you are mm -hmm. probably aware of. Yeah. I would not go trying to repaint it. Unless no. you are Picasso, then you could repaint it. <laughs> <laughs> right? But that's a nice piece. I would say about 35 bucks. She's really kind of cool. It's cool that she is in bas relief, right? So there's, you know, the, the face kind of comes out. Um, I also like that rickrack kind of feel on the other side, all the way around the hand mirror. Hand mirrors are very desirable. People like them. And of course, the vintage ones are good in the market. I'd say $35 for a retail value appraisal on that piece. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Lori. You're awesome. Hey, nice to, nice to see you guys. Thanks so much for being with me. So that's a fun thing. You know, it was like I wanted it. It was the right price. I think I'll take it. Thanks so much for the super chats and super stickers. I appreciate when you show your uh, appre appreciation of the channel and of course of our videos and the information that I share. So thank you very much for doing that. And don't forget about sharing the channel too. My guests are here from all over. We like to see uh, how many cool objects you guys got while you were out thrifting or out yard sailing, or maybe just out digging around your own house. Not Family really. heirlooms are always cool too. What are you guys doing? You're talking to one another. Yes, there is. Oh, yes, there mm -hmm. is. Yes, there is. Where are you? You're not paying attention. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello, hello. How are you? I want to look How at the ceramic. You? I think I want to look at the ceramic bowl. And then we'll get back to that that 
piece of artwork maybe um, once they get their lights right because there's a big glare on that piece of artwork. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Jeannie, Western New York. Hi, Jeannie. So Western New York. Great. So what have we got here? Looks like a seagull that's going to get some fish. Yeah, it's um, it's a Limoges TNV. Let's see. Show me the mark. It's Limoges. It's Tresselmont and Voigt. There it is. Made in Limoges, France. Can you show us the bottom again? There you go. Notice that big, large, almost donut like a wheel. Can you see that? There's an interior circle and an exterior circle. Nice, bright, white Limoges clay. I like it. Now, yeah. that piece is um, imported into the United States and then probably painted here. So did the person who painted the image actually sign it? No, I looked all over for a signature. All right. Oftentimes, that what you, that's what you see. Uh, you typically will see a signature. So it comes into the United States. It's totally blank. And then you go from there. And then you see, of course, this particular piece. I really like the, it's sort of like they're thinking about it as a painting. They're not just painting yeah. little flowers around it, but they're thinking about it in terms of the composition of a painting with the lighter part of the sky there and then the darker part of the sea. Yeah. And then you've got some other, of course, seagulls or gulls in general um, around the whole piece. So it really is something of a composition for the painted part. I think that's really quite nice. I am a little surprised that whoever painted it didn't put their mark on it. But I'll I'm sure again, but I didn't see yeah, it. No, I'm sure you looked, but oftentimes when they do that much thinking about it, right, and working with it, you're seeing that. So the TNV piece is worth about $125. Why? First of all, the painting is exceptional. It's really yeah. good hand painted work. And then yeah. you have a nice, unusually shaped piece. It's not just your average plate or average trinket tray. You have a vessel that really is quite fine with respect to the piece. It dates to the early years of the 20th century. It's not a late 1800s piece. It's an early 1900s piece. And I'd say, yes, definitely over $100 for that piece. Good yeah. for you. How much did you pay? Where'd you get it? I paid 45 uh, mm -hmm. at uh, Restore Habitat for Humanity. Just okay. Well, I that's always see Limoges with flowers and I've never seen with like the birds. So that's really what, why I bought it. I don't usually jump, like pay that much for stuff. Okay. Well, that's okay. You know, you, you helped an important charity. They're all good charities, right? So you help them out with that. And now you know that you actually are going to make about three times of what you paid. So yeah. you did very well with it. And I do think that the unusual nature of the painting will serve you well. I like that a lot, but for the rest of you who you have to know what you're looking for. And maybe you like flowers and the flower ones are valuable too. But I want you to look for that. Show us the bottom again. I want you to look for that. Thank you very much, honey, for those, that, that concentric circle. I want you to look for both of those. The mark is good, the T and V mark, but bright white clay and those concentric circles are going to be what you're looking for. And that's what this channel does that other channels don't do. You're going shopping, you're looking at this and, oh, I saw this and, oh, I saw that. I want to show you what to look for so you pick the right thing. Good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah, that's a nice piece because, of course, the painting is not your typical. Uh, but, you know, the typical ones are great, too. A lot of people like the flowers. You know, they're pretty typical. So that's terrific. Thank you very much for your super chats and super stickers. I love that all of you are succeeding. And I know that with the information that I share, I can help you to succeed, to gain the confidence. A lot of you are telling me, you've given me the confidence, Dr. Lori. It's not only about making the money, but you've given me the confidence. And that's what I love to hear. That's what I love to hear. Oh, I took your breath away today, huh? When you said, yes, yes, that's right. You had a $5 dolly print and it was worth a lot. It was worth a lot. Uh, arranging the video call. I had a video call with Steve today and that was the result where he had picked up a very famous Salvador Dali print and it was, he picked it up for five bucks and it was a real bargain as I talked to about them uh, and it was worth 1000 beautiful piece. Uh, I will also say that when you are looking at these pieces and you are, you know, you don't, you're not sure you don't know, I give you many options and many ways that I can help you with, of course, my background and my appraisals. So, Use, use the website and don't forget to sign up to the newsletter. So we've got this piece. Mm. Fix your hair. Make sure your hair looks good. Let's see the <laughs> hair. <laughs> I'm just joking. That poor guy, he just decided to move his hair out of his way. I'm, making, I'm teasing him. And I like the blue bowl a lot. I have to say I like the blue bowl. Let's take a look at this. Um, let's take a look at this blue bowl. And then I got to talk about that 
that other piece that is the pre-Columbian-ish piece because I made fun of him with his hair. <laughs> and I'm just teasing. That's mm. another thing. A lot of you are like, oh, Dr. Laura, you're so rude. I'm just teasing. <laughs> so I want to make sure that you all know I love you very much. Teasing is is a, a, a sign of, of love. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. What's your name? Hi, I'm Jackie. Hi, Jackie. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, honey. Where are you in the world? New York. <laughs> all right. Places. Look at this case glass piece. I like this piece a lot. You know, mm. it kind of reminds me of sort of a bunt pan. And I think that's because, you know, sometimes there are certain forms that you, you think, oh, that makes that feels like something familiar. When mm. you when you do that, that's very good for your for basically educating your eyeballs. So someone said to me today on a video call, hey, Dr. Lori, I want to know if I have a good eye. I want you to tell me if what I'm picking is good. A lot of people do that on the video calls, and that's fine. But one of the things that I want you to do is make those connections visually. So when you saw this piece, what did you think of? See, me, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of bunt pans, right? Because they're familiar. So you want to think of what's familiar to you. Then I'm also thinking about those inserts, cobalt blue inserts, making that connection, making your brain say, what does this look like? What does this look like? When your eye sees something will help you each time you see something. So start to make that a practice when you're in the thrift store. How'd you acquire this? And what did you think of it when you first saw it, Jackie? Oh, uh, it was at Goodwill and it was like overlooked, you know, it was at the end of the day and I, I saw it sitting there and I, um, I knew it was something because it had this pontal. Okay, it has a sharp element at the bottom, which is called a pontal. It's where the blow pipe has been, you know, they blow into it and, and then they make the form and then that's been broken off. And then sometimes it's smoothed down and sometimes it's not. If you feel the sharp pontal, that's yeah. oftentimes indicative of a blown piece, a piece that's hand blown glass. Okay, so there's yeah. no marking other than the pontil, right? No, actually, as I took it home and cleaned it up because it was dusty, it has um, a signature and date and Vermont written on Great. the bottom. So it's and a studio, it's a studio glass artist piece from Vermont, right. and it's got a date on it, probably from the '80s or '90s. Actually, it's um 2003, and oh, the artist mm. is Michael Egan. Oh, okay. So it's a Michael Egan piece and you've got the date and you've also got the signature. That's wonderful. So yeah. now, did you look up Michael? I bet you you found Michael easily on Google. I, I definitely did. And he has lovely pieces. So I was really happy I could get this for a song at Goodwill. So what, what was your song? How much did you sing for? Uh, I think it was like $3. And... So $3 for a piece that's worth about 300 Ooh. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Why? I, I was thinking maybe two, but I wasn't sure because he didn't have anything like this on his website. And not, so. not, not now. Remember, now these forms are now something that he's not doing today that he was doing 20 years ago or almost 20 years ago. Right. Yeah. So cool. think about that. That's a very nice piece. Um, you Also, it's nice for its size. Also, it's nice because it's mm -hmm. hot, widely functional. You use it in all different ways. Me, I wouldn't put a darn thing in it. I'd put it on a table <laughs> and I'd look at it. And it would be eye candy, as they say, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really going nice. up in the cabinet and nobody's allowed to touch it. <laughs> that's good. I like that too. Nobody's allowed to touch it. You can just look at it. Hey, Jackie, that's a nice one. I like that. Thank you so much. I appreciate hey. all your help. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm happy to provide the help. It's also a good idea that Jackie cleaned it off, right? Got to do a little bit of cleaning. When you do that, don't be overzealous. Dusting with a white cotton cloth is you know, the best idea when it comes to those particular pieces. So my guests are here. Let's see what they've got. Well, I teased him about his hair, so I'm going to appraise his bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How, How are you doing, doing, Dr. Lori? I'm good. doing fine. What's How your name? How are you? I'm good. What's your That's name? Good. You my name from? is Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan from yeah. Connecticut. All right. So are you Northern Connecticut, Hartford, or Southern Connecticut, uh, New Haven? Naugatuck. Naugatuck, Connecticut. Naugatuck. So you're kind of in the middle. Yeah, in the valley. All right. So tell me about <laughs> this piece that looks pre-Columbian. How'd you acquire it? Yeah, Did so I, I, I picked it up at a thrift shop. Uh, uh, at a thrift store, I got it at Savers, actually, on, um, hello? I'm here with you. I'm listening to you. You said you got it at me? Savers, 
And you said you picked it up at a thrift oh, stop. No. A couple of bucks? I think it froze. Oh, okay. Okay. A couple of things about Jonathan's piece. First of all, it would be unmarked on the underside. It's got two, of course, heads. Those particular pieces are oftentimes the way that you can tell when they have double heads and they've got a lot of decoration like his does. Oftentimes, those are the ones from the 1960s that are the reproductions of the pre-Columbian pieces that date back to the Spanish colonial period of, of course, the 1500s to about the 1800s. So his piece is the 20th century reboot, if you will, reproduction, and value on his piece is about $50, even though he paid less than that for it. They're about 50 bucks, but they're nice. They're looking at a particular culture that's bygone, right? But uh, ceramic, but it is not the pre-Columbian pieces that we have seen here. I remember some real bargains where we had real pre-Columbian pieces that date all the way back to the 15 and 1600s uh, from places like Central America and South America uh, that we've had and we featured on Real Bargains. That's not one of those, but it's a nice piece anyway. Thanks, of course, to him and thanks to, of course, all my guests for being with me and thanks to you for watching. I'm Dr. Lori. I'll see you next time.